Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the January 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, get some tips, and see how I made them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. In yesterday's video, I debuted the latest sheet load of cards, January 2021, and told you how you could download it for yourself for free. Make sure that if you haven't watched that video yet and you want to download the file that you check out yesterday's video. I will have it linked in the description box below and as a card at the end of this video. Today I'll be sharing how I made my first set along with a few tips along the way and my team of collaborators will be sharing a look at their first set of cards this month. Make sure once you're done with my video that you visit their YouTube channels, Instagram accounts, or blogs to see what they've created. Everybody is linked in that description box below. Before I get started on the process, I thought I would share with you a look at the main products I'll be using. If I do add anything later on, I will be sure to let you know. But if I leave you with any questions, as always, leave those in the comment section and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I will of course be using the sheet load of cards printable. Once again, you can find out how to download this in yesterday's video. For my sentiments today, I'm going to be using a page from a free printable that I have created for this month. I will be sharing with you tomorrow how you can download this. I'm going to use the page where I did just a whole bunch of different ways to say thank you. Because I do need some thank you cards for myself and my daughter for Christmas gifts, I thought that this would be a great way to use the newest sheet load of cards. For my paper and cardstock, I got five pieces of light blue cardstock just from my stash. And for the pattern papers, I picked up these three sheets at my local scrapbooking store. These are from Echo Park's Winter Magic Collection. I thought that I could make some holiday thank yous and not have to use more Christmas paper because I'm kind of burnt out on it. Before I get to the process video, I know I mentioned it yesterday, but this month's cutting guides for the cardstocks can seem a little bit intimidating. I think that you'll see after today's process video, it's not as bad as you think, it's just some extra cutting. I will be back later in the month though to show you how to alter the sketch just a little bit that if you don't want to do all this cutting for the mats, you can still get that basic layout. Let's get crafty. To get started today, I'm going to be cutting my three pattern papers per the instructions on the cutting guide. The first thing I do is cut two strips at five inches wide for pieces A and B, and then that final strip I will cut into three pieces for my piece C. These will each be cut at the two inches wide that the strip stays at, and then one and three quarters inches tall. I will be hanging on to the bottom of this strip to make cards for my sheet load leftovers video later this month. Once all of the piece C's were cut, I got out one of my five inch wide pattern papers and I cut that into three pieces that are three and a quarter inches tall. And this will be pieces A. Then to finish off cutting the pattern paper, that second strip that was five inches wide gets cut to three pieces that are two and a half inches tall for piece B. And once again, I will be saving the extra of these patterns for that feature later in the month. I then use this same process to cut my other two pieces of pattern paper. Now if your pattern paper does have like a top and a bottom, make sure that when you cut it you keep that in mind for those final cards. Mine that I'm using today, it doesn't really matter the orientation. Here's where I'm going to stray from the cutting guides just a little bit. If you're going to stamp your sentiments, you will want to follow the instructions for CS1 to cut your pieces down correctly. 
for my sentiments today, I'm going to be using the free printable that I talked about in yesterday's video. This is a PDF file that has lots of different sentiments that are already set up to be cut and added to the cards for January. I will be back tomorrow to let you know how you can download this PDF file for free. I chose the thank you page in the file and I'm going to start by cutting this into five strips that are two inches wide. Once those are cut, I'm going to just rotate those and cut them down to the final size of two and a half inches tall. Each page does yield 15 sentiments and since I only need nine for this sheet load set, I can hold on to those for future projects. Now I'm going to start cutting down my matting card stocks. The first ones I'm going to do are the set of three for CS2. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a strip that is five and one eighth inches wide. Five and one eighth is the mark that's halfway between the five and five and a quarter. This strip will then get rotated and I cut it into three pieces that are three and a half inches tall. This will be piece A and I'll get three out of each of these first pieces of cardstock. Next I bring back in the leftover strip and I'm going to cut it for piece D first. Now the cutting guides call for this to be two and three quarters inches wide by three quarters inches tall but because I'm going to use a special punch later on I just cut three pieces that were three quarters inches tall. The punch that I'm going to use actually takes a little bit of the length off so I didn't want to cut it down too short. Don't worry though, if you don't have the punch that I'm going to be using, I will show you later on in the process video how you can make your own fishtail end. And finally for CS2 layout A, I'm going to cut that bottom portion into two pieces that are two and a quarter inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. Now I will be keeping again these cardstock scraps for my leftovers video. Here's a look at the eight finished pieces that you will get out of layout A. I'm just going to cut two more pieces of cardstock exactly like this. Next, I cut one piece of cardstock following the layout B, and this will yield me six pieces that are five and one eighth inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall. And finally, for the mats, I'm going to cut one piece of cardstock following the instructions for layout C. The first strip I cut is five and one eighth inches wide. And then these next pieces, I'm going to cut in half to four and a quarter inches tall. You might have noticed there I did rotate that. And then I'm going to cut it into three pieces that are two and a quarter inches wide. Then I took that first strip that I cut to five and one eighth inches wide and I cut that into three pieces that were two and three quarters inches tall. Now I'm going to punch the fishtail end in CS2D. I will be using this Stampin' Up! Pick a Banners punch for mine and I will be using the fishtail side. Now I purposely designed this file so this strip was three quarters inches tall because this punch puts these fancy ends in pieces that are one half inch, three quarters inch, and one inch tall. Now you'll see there it does cut off some of the length of the piece and that's why earlier I did not cut this down to two and three quarters inches. But here I'm going to show you what to do if you did go ahead and follow that because you don't have the punch. I'm going to cut one of these strips to two and three quarters inches wide and then I'm going to bring in a pair of scissors and just hand cut that fishtail. I do that by cutting into the center of the end just a little bit and then I cut in from each point to the top of that slit. That gives a great fishtail and it is super easy to do. And now it's time to do some matting. I got out PPB and CS2B and I will be adhering the pattern paper onto the blue cardstock mat.
Now you'll notice that after I put the adhesive on the back of the pattern paper, I align this to one side of that piece of cardstock. This will actually end up aligning it to the right side of the cardstock. If you look back at the sheet load of cards, you'll notice in the sketch that there's an even border on the top, bottom, and left of this piece. Now I'm going to do the same thing with CS2A and PPA, but this time when I have the adhesive on the back of piece A, this gets aligned to the left of the cardstock mat. Once again, if you reference back to the sheet load print, you'll see that the even border is on the top, bottom, and right side of this piece. Once all those pieces were matted, it was time to start working on the sentiment strip. The first thing I did was add my sentiment to the top center of piece CS2C, and you'll notice there there isn't any gap at the top, and then I placed that final piece of pattern paper centered at the bottom. Now if your pieces don't line up exactly here, there might be a little gap or a little overlap depending on your cutter. Don't worry about it because later that fishtail strip is going to cover it up. This gets adhesive added to the back and then I align it with the right side of that strip. Here though it looks like the left. For some reason if I turn stuff around like this, it just helps me align it better. Now you're free to adjust that strip up or down depending on your sentiment how much it fills up at that top. I'm just going to continue the same process until all of my sentiment strips are completed. I want to take a moment here to show you the difference between the two fish tails. The one on the left is the one that I did by hand where I cut it down, and the one on the right is where I just left the strip at 3 inches wide and used the punch. You can decide, just depending on your taste, which you would rather do. Now that all of the pieces are matted and put together, it's time to start pairing up my pieces for the final cards. When I do this, I'm going to focus on the pattern papers, and I make sure that each set has each of the pattern papers represented. I always keep some pre-cut and scored card bases ready here in my craft area, so I just got out 9 of those for the cards today. To put together the cards, I will be putting the largest piece centered to the left of the card base. I'm going to have the even border on the top, right, and bottom of that card. Then I'm going to grab the second piece of pattern paper, or the middle, add adhesive to it, and then this gets aligned to the right side. At this point, you could go ahead and adhere your sentiment strip to the front of the card, but I want to use some foam tape for this, so for now I'm just going to set that to the side and continue to put the rest of my card bases together. Now that that is all done, I'm going to bring in my big blue roll of foam tape in the quarter inch width and I'm going to adhere my sentiment strips to the card base. I will be putting three pieces on each of these strips, one at the top to go where the white cardstock border is there and one at the bottom for the other white cardstock border at the bottom of the card front. Then I want to add a little bit of stability to the center, so I put a piece across there, making sure to put it beneath where that flag goes off the page as well. I'll burnish that blue release tape a little bit, and then I pull that off and get it adhered to the card. I do have this blue foam tape in a few different widths, but because of that border on the top and bottom, this skinniest roll works the best. If you're interested in finding out more about this, make sure to check out my link in the description box. Now it's time to add a little bit of sparkle. 
I got out my clear holographic sequins along with some leftover glue dots from past paper pumpkin kits. I will be placing three sequins on the front of each card and I just use my nonstick scissors to place three glue dots scattered around that. Once I have those in place, I pull off that release paper and then I pull in my Marvi Ukaida jewel picker to help me place the sequins. I've been using these holographic sequins quite a bit recently because I like the sparkle that they give the cards and they kind of take on whatever colors are in the card so you don't have to have a sequin that's an exact match. To see a close up of each of the cards, make sure to check out yesterday's video where I also tell you how you can download the printable for free. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my first set of cards using the January 2020 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators linked. They're all in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.